You are characters in a post-apocalyptic story of survival. In a future where everything is connected, the fate of the network determines the fate of the world. There are outlaws in the streets, there are alien influences from above and below, and machine agents seek to infest the world with the human punishment virus. Lines are blurred between what is alive and what isn't. Find out who you can trust and finish off everyone else. It's a dangerous game. Bring data chips into the network, pick apart an outlaw or two on the way, manage resources and objectives, negotiate, listen to your leaders or elect new ones, and when in doubt, send other players to the isolation cube. If you're loyal to the humans, your goal is to keep the city alive, prevent the degradation of the morale, resource and security tracks, and deliver blue data chips into the network. If you're loyal to the machines, your goal is to kill all humans. Reduce the city's resource track to zero, bring the red elite mech Deus into the game, or deliver red data chips into the network. If you're loyal to Legion, your goal is to prepare the invasion of Legion by kindling chaos. Reduce the city's security value to zero, or increase the enemy's threat level to four. If you're loyal to the Fallen, your goal is to bring back what was dead. Corrupt both human and machine worlds by delivering purple data chips, not only into the network, but also into the junkyard. All players will pretend to be loyal and to work in the interest of the human side. Special care must be taken to prevent a fallen victory, as their victory condition overrides all the others. Each player also has at least one secret personal objective that they need to fulfill to take part in their team's victory. The grey enemy chips belong to no team. They are the outlaws, and they will try to stop everyone. If no team fulfills their victory condition, the game wins. This is called an outlaw victory. Players will take turns taking actions, activating outlaws and resolving events, all the while trying to bring data chips into the network. The game is divided into three tiers or phases. The human phase, the machine phase, and the end of game phase. The human phase ends when players have collectively filled the first line of the network with data chips. At the end of the human phase, players will see what data has been delivered, but not by whom or in what order. The machine phase ends when players have collectively filled the first two lines of the network. Players will not see what data has been delivered, nor by whom. Depending on the number of players, the machines may then secretly identify each other as teammates or recruit new teammates. Legion may infect new players, even machines. For these two phases, a tier or a line in the network has to be filled with chips before a new tier or line can be begun. In the end of game phase, players can deliver data to new tiers in the network freely, but if the third line of the network has been filled, the game immediately ends and victory conditions are checked. The game can end early if the morale, security or resource tracks fall to zero, if the red elite mech Deus enters the network, or if the threat level rises to 4. Havoc is a fighter and can dispatch outlaws easily. Faker is a machine and can quickly acquire influence cards and powerful programs. Jaden is an all-rounder and can support the players with a single-use all-rounder card deck. Dryden is a medic and can support other players, even remotely. Nova is a runner and can deliver more data chips faster into the network. Decoy is a specialist and is accompanied by Kuro, a companion dog that can trigger actions and carry data chips independent of Decoy's location. The active player starts the round. They draw cards from their personal influence deck into their hand, up to the amount printed on their player board. If the morale tracker is in the yellow area, draw one fewer influence cards to your hand. The active player can now do actions, free actions and movement in any order. After the player has used all of their actions and movements, or decides not to do any more, they check their hand size limits. In the activation phase, 
players will be attacked by outlaw enemies. A new outlaw will spawn, and the elite mech Deus may advance towards the network. In the event phase, the active player draws an event card corresponding to the current game phase. Events usually have two different outcomes, and the entire table will resolve the event. After, if the riot bar is in the yellow zone, reduce morale by one. Pass the active player token to the next player in clockwise order. This ends a game turn. In summary, draw cards, perform movement and actions, activate enemies, resolve event, pass the card. There are six numbered main areas, and areas can contain more than one location. Movement within an area is free, so is moving to the med center from the sectors or the nexus. All other inter-area movement costs movement points. Movement can be done before, after, or in between actions. In the three sectors, players have access to three different methods to acquire and equip data chips. In the junkyard, players can drop data chips, look at drop data chips, or remove data chips unseen from the game. In the network, players must place data chips for rewards and victory conditions. In the darknet, players can acquire programs which provide powerful effects. In the med center, players can quickly heal hit points and wounds. In the nexus, players can construct the blue elite mech Apex, which fights on the human side and can defeat the red elite mech Deus. In the HQ, players can buy and equip weapons, vote on a new leader, or vote to send players to the isolation cube. In the monolith, players can acquire recon cards, which provide information on enemy objectives or loyalties. In the isolation cube, isolated players are limited in their influence on the game. They can try to break out or be pardoned by the leader. In the city, players can use actions to manage the game's riot, morale, and resources meters. Machines want to lower resources to zero. Starving humans are easy targets. But if the morale bar ever depletes, both humans and machines may lose to the outlaws. The riot track can never climb too high or fall too low, as either extreme, anarchy and surveillance, will bring difficult and destructive events into the game. The factory provides and may block access to the network, but otherwise offers no player actions. In addition to the board actions, players have character-specific actions that are printed on the player boards. After movement and actions, the activation phase begins. Roll the orange die to see which of the six areas activates for outlaw activity. All outlaws in the area will now attack players in the area or the player-controlled blue elite mech Apex. Attacks happen on an area basis, regardless of inner area locations. Tanks target one player, but if they hit, deal damage to all players in an area. Snipers can attack players one area over. Soldiers have no special ability. Crawlers always move one space along the red crawler line before they attack. Thieves deal no damage, but remove hit players' data chips and place them in the junkyard. After all enemy attacks have been dealt with, roll the red die to spawn a new outlaw. A 1 spawns a tank, 2 spawns a sniper, 3 and 4 spawn a soldier, 5 and 6 spawn a crawler, 7 and 8 spawn a thief. Rolling a 9, 10, 11 or 12 means no outlaw spawns this round. Determine the spawned outlaw's spawn position by rolling the two grey dice. Place the spawned outlaw on the blue and red spawn location point that corresponds to the sum of the two dice. If a crawler spawns, don't roll the grey dice. New crawlers always enter the game on the number one red space on the red line in the factory, pushing other crawlers or the elite mech Deus forward along the red track towards the network. Only one enemy is spawned per turn, and enemies don't attack when they're spawned. If enemies aren't defeated, you risk an increasing threat level. This can end the game, usually in favor of Legion. Depending on the current game phase, human, machine, or end of game phase, the active player draws a tier 1, 2, or 3 event card and reveals it to all players. 
Some events call for a decision from the leader or from the general. Some event cards spawn new outlaw enemies. But most event cards call for participation from all players by calling for a target influence value. All players can contribute influence cards face down from their hand to influence the outcome of the event. After all players have contributed, two cards from the general influence deck are added face down to the pile of contributions. This is then shuffled and revealed one card at a time. If the target is met or exceeded, the event is successful, resolve the green box. If the target is not met, resolve the red box. Events will get increasingly difficult and dramatic over time. Outlaws attack players in the activation phase. An attacked player defends against the hit with their defense value, plus the values from the allowed amount of blue cards played from their hand. The outlaw then attacks with red cards drawn from the general influence deck. If the combined value of the red cards exceeds the player defense, the outlaw successfully hits. Deal damage equal to the outlaw's strength value, not the difference between attack and defense. If, in turn, a player wants to attack outlaws, they can do so in the action phase, at the cost of one action point. They attack with red cards from their hand. The outlaw draws a single card from the general influence deck. If that card is red, the value is added to the player's attack. If it is blue, the value is added to the enemy's defense. If attack is higher than defense, the enemy is hit. Deal damage to the enemy equal to the player's strength value, not the difference between attack and defense. Weapons can be bought and used to make these checks easier and to deal more damage. Some weapons automatically deal damage. All characters have four areas of upgrades, called boosts. Hacking, implants, security and rigging with two upgrades per category. All boosts come with requirements in dotted lines that need to be fulfilled. Acquired boosts are marked with stimshot markers. Partially fulfilled requirements can be indicated with empty stimshot markers. Players retain their level one boosts even when moving the stimshot marker down to the level two boosts. On the Command Center board, the Elite Mechs, Apex and Deus wait to be constructed. Various game effects and actions can contribute to the construction of either Elite Mech. Players can hasten the construction of Apex, the Blue Mech, in the Nexus location on the board. When built, the Blue Mech, Apex, fights on the side of the humans. The Red Mech, Deus, fights on the side of the machines. Apex spawns on the blue one space of the blue line. Deus starts on the red one space of the red line. Deus moves towards the network. Apex moves towards Deus. Crawlers push Deus toward the network. Deus also automatically advances one space towards the network after every game round. Should Deus enter the network, the game ends and the machines are the preliminary winners. When Deus and Apex meet, on the red and blue 3 and 4 space, they destroy each other. When Apex enters the game, give the Apex control marker to the General. As a free action in their turn, the General decides whether Apex advances, attacks an outlaw in its area, or does nothing. Players cannot attack Apex. Apex cannot attack Crawlers. The leader decides some of the event cards and decides all ties in the game, including outlaw attacks, votes on new leaders or votes for the isolation cube. The general also decides some event cards and gains control over Apex after it is built. The general can also destroy four outlaw enemies in their turn as a free action, but loses the general badge as well as the privilege to be general again. New generals are appointed by leaders. New leaders are voted on by the players.
The game ends when one of these things is true. All tier 3 slots in the network are occupied, Deus has reached the network, resource, security or morale in the city drop to zero, the enemy threat level reaches 4. If humans have a majority of blue chips in the majority of columns in the network, they are the preliminary winner. If Deus reaches the network, if the resource bar drops to zero, or if the machines have a column majority of red chips in the network, the machines are the preliminary winner. If neither the machines nor the humans hold a column majority in the network, but there is either a blue or a red chip majority in the network, that team is the preliminary winner. If the outlaw enemy threat level reaches 4, or the security in the city drops to 0, the Legion player is the preliminary winner. Players then reveal their loyalty cards. If there are fallen players, and there are at least 3 purple chips in the junkyard, or 2 purple chips in the junkyard and 2 purple chips in the network, the fallen win instead of the preliminary winner. Fallen cannot win with column or chip majorities. If there are no fallen players, or they don't have enough purple chips in the right places, the preliminary winner is the final winner of the game.